Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. I am Anthony Cazenza, as always, with you talking Bengals football, and we are on the precipice of the start of the 2017 regular season, and we are so excited. Uh, Scott Schultz, my co-host, is is with me as always. Scott, how are you doing? Are you ready for week one? Do you have your plan set to watch the Bengals take on the Ravens? Sadly, not yet. My mind is still trying to um, absorb all the Paw Patrol I've been watching over the past week. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Our, but I'm thinking of changing a couple of our, uh, our our guest Matthew Cohen is with Baltimore Beatdown, and he he's a little bit uh, a, a little bit more fresh faced looking than than you and I are, Scott. So I don't know if he knows about the whole <laughs> Paw Patrol thing. But Matthew, good to have you with us I, again. Matthew is with uh, SB Nation's Raven site, Baltimore Beatdown. He's the editor there, and he's going to help us preview. Uh, the upcoming uh, season opener, Ravens at Bengals at Paul Brown Stadium. So if you, for those of you who are joining us in the live YouTube chat, uh, definitely if you got some questions, let us know. And and if you got some questions for Matthew, we'll we'll relay those. But we've got some as well. Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself before we kind of dive into the whole the whole 2017 season opener and uh, how you kind of became a Ravens fan, how you got to work with SB Nation and Baltimore Beatdown. Yeah, so again, thank you for having me on. Um, as a Ravens fan, I kind of started out just – my family on my mom's side is just from Baltimore. So I, I kind of grew up with the Ravens all around me. I was watching them as a kid, and just over time I grew up with, you know, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, some of those big defensive names, and it's it stuck. Um, in terms of coming to Baltimore Beatdown, I was – I this is my second year there. About around June of last year, I saw a tweet from the Baltimore Beatdown saying they were looking for new writers. So I applied to send some stuff from my high school paper, and lo and behold, I got the job. And here I am as an editor now. It's kind of a been lucky to get such a great experience. Awesome, yeah. I mean, obviously the the SB Nation Sports Networks. Uh, are full of great writers, editors, and Scott and I are patting ourselves on the back too because we we uh, are, are part of that. But uh, glad to have you with us. And and for you, you're you're pretty stoked. I mean, basically, since the Ravens have been in in existence, they've been competitive and or champions. So you you watched yeah. a lot of yeah, you've watched a lot of quality football over the years, which is which is awesome. Uh, I'm just going to start off with with kind of a, a obvious one. A question that obviously a lot of Bengals fans have on their mind, and it's about Joe Flacco, his herniated disc in his neck. There's been talk about, you know, at least in the summer, there was talk about him potentially missing some regular season time. It doesn't look that way, correct? Yes, that's correct. He uh, returned to practice on Saturday, and today when the Ravens injury report came out, Flacco was listed as a full participant in practice. So all throughout the process, Coach John Harbaugh and – everyone else around the Ravens have really tried to stay with their mantra that Flacco will be playing in week one. And it appears based on the practice schedule that he will be ready to go. Awesome. Uh, You know, I, well, I guess I should say not awesome for the Ravens, maybe not so much for the (laughs) Bengals, but uh, there's a lot of new faces now on this Ravens team, Matt, and mostly at, for at least for me at wide receiver, they, they added Jeremy Macklin, uh, they still have Mike Wallace, who they've had for for a little bit of time here. Uh, Brashad Perriman is a guy that they drafted a couple of years ago and has yet to really make a big impact on this team. But Steve Smith's gone. Obviously, Torrey Smith from a few years ago is is gone. There's kind of some turnover at the wide receiver position now. With Flacco not really practicing throughout the summer and training camp, you got a couple of new faces there at, at wide receiver. Is there concern there? How has Perriman looked? Kind of break down the wide receiver group for us, if you would. So I would say there's, at least in my mind, slightly some concern. And that's only because Flacco hasn't really had enough time to gel and get chemistry with some of his new faces at the receiver group. Um, losing Steve Smith obviously hurts. It's, you know, he's a potential Hall of Famer, probably a first ballot Hall of Famer. It's hard to lose a guy like that. But when you bring in someone like Jeremy Macklin, who I don't think you can say is on Steve Smith's level, but he's a really great receiver. He's been to Pro Bowls in the the past. And while the 
Ravens will likely be using him in the slot instead of outside. He should be having a pretty big impact this year. He may well lead the team in targets. Um, in terms of Perryman, he actually has been has had some injury setbacks too. He returned also on Saturday to practice. He missed, I think, the entire preseason. Um, but during OTAs and mini camp stuff over the summer, he was one of the most impressive guys. Guys that we saw on t- on Twitter every day was that oh Perryman was the most impressive. The highlights after practice was all that Perryman was making these incredible catches, big plays, and it was it garnered a lot of hype and since he's missed so much time in the preseason I think that kind of died down a bit but now that he's back I think it's time to start ramping the hype back up in terms of a potential breakout year um in terms of Wallace he so Wallace was the team's leading receiver last year with uh he had a thousand yards I don't know if I can undoubtedly state he'll be the leading receiver this year. I think he's the favorite to be just based on that. He's still the number one receiver in the offense. Um, hopefully with Flacco now two years removed from his uh, major knee injury, he'll be more able to take advantage of Mike Wallace's deep, deep threat ability. And again, hopefully Flacco can now have chemistry with his new group of, of receivers. Obviously that's a little bit of a concern considering Flacco missed the entire preseason and considering how bad the offense looked during the preseason, I don't know how much you follow the Ravens preseason games, but they were bad. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how they perform this week. So Matt, this is Scott Schultz. I have a, I guess a question, not so much about a specific person, um, but I guess in the, as far as the team in general, uh, looking as, because I know this series seems to be one that goes and runs, where Bengals win a few, Baltimore wins a few. So looking back, the Bengals have won six of the last seven. Uh, so obviously, as a Bengals fan, I would expect for <laughs> that. As a Ravens fan, I'm sure you're expecting that to change. So my question would be, what is it about the 2017 team that has Ravens fans excited saying, you know, that streak is ending and this is why? That streak is going to end because the Baltimore Ravens are getting back to what they were founded on, and that's defense. Well, while the offense, I was saying, really underwhelmed during the preseason, the defense was spectacular. And this was a unit that finished seventh in total defense last year, I believe. I think that's right. And they got better. They brought in – you talked about the – wide receiver additions. They brought in a lot on defense. They re-signed Brandon Williams. They brought in Tony Jefferson, who based on pro football focuses grading system was a top five safety in the NFL. They brought in first round cornerback Marlon Humphrey. They brought in Brandon Carr. Marlon Humphrey was dropped in the first round. He's not even going to start this year. The secondary is one of the deepest the Ravens have ever had. But one of the, but while the secondary is exciting because it's deep and has you know guys that are going to produce, it's the front seven that really, more than anything, has people excite, excited. It's one of the deepest units in the NFL, and it was the biggest reason why the Ravens finished the preseason first in total defense. It's everyone has talent, and everyone is going to be expected to produce. This is the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. I'm Anthony Cazenza, joined by my co-host Scott Schultz, and we are talking with Matthew Cohen of Baltimore Beatdown, the SB Nation Ravens site. Good to have him with us. You you talked just now about a lot of the secondary additions and and all of that. Uh, not to not to puff out the the chest necessarily about the Bengals, their recent success. But AJ Green has been a maniac against Baltimore. Uh, Absolutely, and uh, I, I believe I read today in the last five games he has six touchdowns, something to that effect. Uh, three 100-yard games, including one that was close to 230 yards receiving. I, I, I'm assuming that the additions of Jefferson and Carr. I mean, obviously you, you, the team wants to shore up the secondary in general, but I would I would assume mm-hmm. that. Green is probably a big focus. Now, how has how has Carr looked? He, he's been a guy who will probably be he, – he signed a big deal with the Cowboys, didn't really ever materialize there. He had a couple years we didn't have any interceptions. I think he's had one interception the last three years. But he'll probably be tasked with covering A.J. Green at least some of the time on Sunday. Uh, how has he looked, and do you feel that he is up to the task to at least contain A.J. Green? 
So I think in terms of covering AJ Green, you're going to see more of a, a Jimmy Smith covering him. Okay. I think the Ravens are still committed to having him as the number one corner. AJ Green is one of those guys that you can't stop. You can only hope to contain him. And if the Ravens can contain him, then they'll have a great chance to, to win this game. The biggest thing that Jimmy Smith has to do is he has to, you know, they're going to the double team AJ, AJ Green just because John Ross now doesn't seem like he's going to play based on the reports that I've seen. And that gives the Ravens, I would think, more freedom to double team AJ Green as with Tyler Borden and Tyler Eifert being the main other targets. Um, you're going to see, you know, safety help, but it's going to be, it's, I think it's the matchup that could decide this this game because if the Ravens are able to slow him down and force the Bengals to look to the other options or run the ball, which is playing right into the Ravens' strength, it's that's what's going to give them the, the best chance to, to win, which is something that – and again, I don't have the stats on this right off the top of my head, but I don't recall the last time the Ravens have ever won at Cincinnati. It's been, I mean, they have won there, but it's been a while. It, it has, and I, you know, obviously the 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 team, the last uh, the Bengals in the last six matchups, I believe, are five and one against Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, but we'll we'll ask you this later in terms of a prediction mm -hmm. of the score and outcome. But as you probably know, I always coin this, especially because of what's happened the last three, four, five years in this series. I always coin this uh, this series as it kind of expect the unexpected. There's Hail Marys that, that end up being caught. There's Steve Smith that have caught big balls that, you know, and, and the games go back and forth and, and uh, they've been a lot of fun to watch. Selfishly speaking, the Bengals, since the Bengals have been winning more often recently, it's been more fun that way. But in general, for, for two teams that, that usually have pretty stout defenses, um, you know, there's been kind of an offensive explosion at times and weird plays that have happened. So it's yeah. been fun to watch in that respect. We did get a question for you in our live YouTube chat. And for those of you that who are joining us live, if you've got a question for Matt, he's going to be here a few more minutes. If you want to have those uh, asked on air, we'll, we'll ask him those. But uh, Sudesh Nair asks, <laughs> who is the lead running back? Um, and and I'll, I'll kind of add to that, just how is the running game going to look for the Ravens this year? Uh, you know, they, they don't have necessarily the big names, but they've got some good guys up front, and, um, you know, they always seem to, to make it work, so to speak. So coming into the preseason, the top guy everyone was talking about was Kenneth Dixon. He's now out for the season with a knee injury. That happened early, I mean, late July. Um, so as a result, now the Ravens kept three running backs on the 53 man roster. That'd be Terrence West, Danny Woodhead and Javarius Allen. Of those three, the lead back is going to be Terrence West. West was the leading rusher last year, and he probably will be again this year. It's, I think it's going to be a uh, by committee system. I really kind of just want to see how they're going to do it in week one, because none of those three backs really, got a lot of playing time together in the preseason. So it's not, it wasn't particularly easy to judge how they're going to be used in the regular season, but it's going to be a lot of Terrence West on running downs and Danny Woodhead obviously is going to be on, on passing downs. Um, from the Ravens last year, the new offensive coordinator running Morningwag now in a second season, hopefully we'll look to run the ball a bit more after Baltimore led the NFL in passes last year, which Ravens throwing the ball more times than anyone in the NFL is not the path to success. It's it's running the ball. So if they can, you know, grind it a bit with Terrence West and keep some of those dump off plays from last year, but use Danny Woodhead instead for those who's one of the the elite running backs in terms of screen passes, I could that's 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 how I see it going. I think it's you're gonna see Buck Allen, Javaris Allen get some touches in there he's the third string back and the third string back for a good reason um but it's gonna be terrence west getting the most of the carries but still on a committee format matt this is scott schultz again i uh actually i was going to ask you about the running backs that was a good question <laughs> uh, so i'm going to uh i guess i'm going to go with something maybe a little more uh, odd or deeper uh <laughs> Several, because I'm a big fan of the draft. A couple years ago, I remember this really highly regarded tight end named Max Williams, who there was a lot of hype regarding great blocker, great receiver. 
I think he's now in his third year with the Ravens, second round pick. Uh, last time I looked at the depth chart, he seems to be way down there. What exactly is up? Is he is he going to become the like the next Tyler Eifert, the next Gronkowski, or was he? I, uh, did it just not work out for him, or is it injuries? I, I guess I'm just curious. Whatever happened with this this guy who had been hyped so much? I think it's a combination of injuries, but also that he's just never really lived up to the potential that he's been thought to have this year in the week one depth chart the Ravens put Nick Boyle as the starting tight end um Williams had a some pretty big plays in the preseason he showed that's probably the, some of the biggest flashes we've seen from him but I don't think he's ever lived up to the potential that everyone thought he was going to have in terms of a elite tight end um with with Dennis Pitta now gone, you may see more from him this year than you ever saw from him in the past, giving him probably the best chance he's ever had to have a breakout season. And hopefully he's able to do so because the Ravens really need someone to step up at tight end and be their reliable option. Talking with Matt Cohen of Baltimore Beatdown, SB Nation's Ravens site. Uh, this is the Orange and Black Insider with Anthony Kazanza and Scott Schulte. Uh, just a couple more questions, and then we'll get you out of here, Matt. There, um, uh, Adrian Vallejo, by the way, Scott, did echo in, in the live YouTube chat, did echo your question there asking who's the, the Ravens' number one tight end, um, obviously going going along the same lines as, as uh, Max William there. James Napke in the YouTube chat has a good you, – you, Matt, you kind of talked about – the, the Ravens defense and how they've really kind of tried to rebuild that defense into what, you know, they were with that star studded lineup of Ed Reed, Ray Lewis that you mentioned earlier. Um, the Bengals are probably going to be without about four starters on defense. Obviously Vontez perfect. One of their best players on defense is out with a suspension. Adam Jones, one of their best corners is out with a suspension. A um, couple other guys, you know, that, that are looking to be nicked up and whatnot, but, is that something uh, when you look at the Bengals defense and you look at the Ravens offense, is that something that you hope or you think that the Ravens can take advantage of with a guy like Woodhead in the passing game, maybe open up play action for the deep ball? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's something that Ravens are going to definitely do. I think they, I mean, they'd be, I think crazy not to take advantage of some of the weaknesses that the Bengals may have this weekend. Um, whether it's, you know, in the passing game with Adam Jones not being there or trying to run the ball more with perfect, not in the middle of the field and not with all his crazy hits. Um, <laughs> and, um, but we'll see. I, it's something that I hope the Ravens will be able to do. And I think it's maybe one of the keys to them winning the game if that is their final result. We're talking again with Matt Matt Cohen of Baltimore Beatdown, the SB Nation site. Um, Matt, um, I, I guess before we kind of get, uh, and my colleague may have one more question for you as well, but um, what, what do you think the biggest key is for this, this week's game? Is it, in terms of the Ravens having success, going into Cincinnati and, and winning this game, is it shutting down A.J. Green? Is it shutting down Tyler Eifert in the red zone? Is it clamping down on the run game? Is it being able to make those big plays in the passing game on offense? What do you think, if you were to really say, this is the one thing the Ravens need to do in order to win this game? The one thing the Ravens need to do to win this game is, we know that the defense is going to perform. I think that's something that a lot of Ravens fans are going to the game just assuming. But the biggest key is, can Flacco get the chemistry with his receivers despite limited time to get that chemistry if he's able to because again as i mentioned earlier during the preseason the ravens offense was absolutely terrible with ryan mallet at the helm who is the backup quarterback so if if flacco is able to get any kind of chemistry get the offense rolling it's going to be a huge improvement and the ravens were able to go four now in the preseason and yes it's the preseason i get it but the defense was so good that they were able to overcome a terrible offense if the offense is able to click a little more with Flacco at the helm, I think that should be enough to win a regular season game instead of a watered-down preseason one. 
Understandable. And uh, the uh, some of the other listeners that are tuning in live are saying, uh, you know, based on I don't know, I don't know how familiar you are familiar you are with the Bengals offensive line situation. But a lot of people seem to think that if the Ravens can get to Andy Dalton, um, you know, they can they can force turnovers, force pressure. Uh, you know, the, the the Bengals lost two star offensive linemen this year in free agency, which hurts. So there, there's a little inexperienced up front. And Dalton may be getting a little skittish if he gets pressure. So, Matt, I know you've got your your Raven sweater on. I see I see the the logo. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get you out of here with this. How do you see this one playing out? What's your prediction on this game? I did see that James Napke in our live YouTube chat did say it should be close. He's calling 24-23 Bengals. Um, I, I tend to agree that it's gonna be close either way. But what what do you think? I 100% agree on that. I think it's going to be a very close game. Honestly, I think it's a, a coin flip on who wins that game because just because the Bengals have losses on on defense and offense that are going to hurt them, but the Ravens still have a lot of offensive question marks. I think at the end of the day, I, I really think this is going to come down to who has the ball last. And at that point, who has the best kicker? And if it comes to that, <laughs> I gotta go with, I got to go with Baltimore. Because we yeah, yeah. do have the best kicker there. I think if, if, if it's going to come down to a last-second field goal, I want Tucker kicking it. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. I guess if I have to give a score prediction, um, I don't know. Uh, that That's tough. Um, I would say somewhere around 24-21 Ravens. Yeah, that's, that's – Some, uh, Low that's scoring. Probably, yeah. That's probably it's probably going to be the occasional big play uh, with a lot of three and outs mixed in for both teams. And like you said, it might it very well may come down to the kicking game. And the Bengals' kicking game is uh, it's interesting at the moment, just to, to say the least. So, uh, Matt, bef- uh, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Where can people you find your work me. aside from? Yeah, absolutely. Where can people find you on Twitter? Where can people find your work aside from at Baltimore Beatdown? I think you do some stuff for the Washington Nationals. I saw as well. Yeah, so um, you can find me on on Twitter at mdc underscore ninety nine. In terms of the Nationals thing you mentioned, I've been writing for a uh, Maryland sports blog. It's mostly a high school sports blog, but I've just been contributing some other stuff. So I've been there, Washington Nationals writer. Um, I've also been working for a local newspaper, which I seriously doubt anyone in Cincinnati cares about, but you can get no, that's, that's uh, awesome. to all my stories from there. Um, yeah. And then on both from beatdown as well, everything, I guess if, everything's on my Twitter. If you want to find my stuff. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the time. I, I know, uh, we had a little, had a little hiccup getting you on here, but I appreciate you dealing with that and coming awesome. on and, uh, Maybe we'll, if you're willing and able, maybe we'll have you on towards the end of the year to uh, talk about the the, the rematch uh, between the Bengals and Ravens. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me. All right. Appreciate it. That was Matthew Cohen with uh, Baltimore Beatdown, the SB Nation Ravens site. Awesome, awesome uh, insight, obviously.